CSIRO's Parkes Radio Telescope is one of the great single-dish radio telescopes of the world. Opened in 1961, it was only the second large radio dish built. And its design, which now seems standard, was completely new and different. Today, the telescope is more powerful than ever, thanks to improvements and renovations over the years. Just about every part of it has been changed, apart from the basic structure. The telescope is operated by CSIRO, Australia's national research organisation. It is a national facility and can be used by astronomers from around Australia and all over the world. Objects in space, such as galaxies, emit radio waves, just as they put out light, infrared, X-rays and other kinds of radiation. One of the telescope's most important roles over the years has been to survey the sky for such radio sources and determine their positions. Astronomers can then check if these radio sources match up with objects already known, galaxies for instance, or if they are completely new. In the 1990s, Parkes carried out a major survey of this kind using a new groundbreaking instrument. This instrument, the Parkes multi-beam receiver, let the telescope see 13 times more sky at once. It was used to hunt for galaxies and also for pulsars inside our own galaxy. The telescope's early work laid the foundations for many important areas of research. For example, in the 1960s, scientists using the Parkes telescope found that our galaxy has a magnetic field, a million times weaker than the Earth's. We now know that other galaxies have magnetic fields too, but they are still not completely understood, and this remains an active area of research. Also in the 1960s, Parkes played a key role in showing that quasars are very distant objects by pinpointing the location of one called 3C273. The telescope has also helped to map the structure of our own galaxy. As recently as 2003, researchers using Parkes found a new distant spiral arm of the galaxy. Although the telescope is used mainly for astronomy, it has also helped to track and receive data from a number of spacecraft. Much of this work has been done for NASA. Most notably, Parkes was one of the tracking stations that received signals from the Apollo 11 mission of July 1969, the first manned moon landing. One of the most important areas of the telescope's work has been the study of pulsars. Radio pulsars are tiny spinning stars, neutron stars, that give off regular pulses of radio waves. More than 1,800 pulsars have been detected, and Parkes has found most of them. In 2003, researchers using the telescope found the first known example of a double pulsar system, two pulsars in orbit around each other. The system has proved perfect for carrying out a number of tests of general relativity. Astronomers are also using Parkes for an innovative search for gravitational waves. This project uses a set of super-fast pulsars monitored by Parkes. If a gravitational wave passes through space where the pulsars are, it will change the arrival time of the pulsar's signals on Earth. CSIRO's Parkes Radio Telescope is an icon of Australian science and remains one of the world's leading single-dish radio telescopes. <laughs>